Senator Tom Harkin. Over the years, I've come to rely on the dedicated staff at CAST to identify critical issues, to bring together leading scientists, to forge consensus views, and to produce authoritative reports. Nobody does a better job of analyzing and interpreting the whole body of research on a particular issue and making policy recommendations informed by science and not speculation. CAST's latest publication, Food Safety and Fresh Produce, could not be more timely and important because the Obama administration has made improving the food safety system a major domestic priority. In March, the administration created the Food Safety Working Group to make recommendations for upgrading America's food safety system for the 21st century. In a succinct, authoritative manner, the new CAST publication addresses the very same issues that are at the heart of the working group's recommendations, including strengthening surveillance and enforcement, improving response and recovery, and placing a much sharper emphasis on preventing outbreaks of sickness caused by contaminated food. This report makes a compelling case for creating a comprehensive farm-to-table food safety network involving all points in the production, processing, distribution, preparation, food chain. I especially appreciate that the new CAST report is written with the consumer in mind and is readily available free of charge at the CAST website. Now, we know that consumption of fresh fruits uh, and vegetables has gone up in the United States, and that's a good thing. If we look particularly at the consumption of fresh vegetables, we see that that's increased quite dramatically in the last several years. That is largely due to the availability of new products on the market that didn't exist before. If you think about bagged salads, you really didn't find those prior to about hmm, 15 or 20 years ago. That's a new product, tremendous uh, sales in the market these days, and people love it. And it's healthy. It's good for us. Unfortunately, there have been some downsides to this. We can see that the rate of foodborne illness associated with fresh produce has increased dramatically. Now, you may remember 2006. That was the year of uh, E. coli in fresh bagged spinach. And we saw that spinach really disappeared off the market for a period of about oh, three to four months. Tremendous losses in the industry. And of course, that's on top of the uh, couple hundred people who became ill and two or three actually did pass away from that. So this is an issue, it's a real issue, and the rate of foodborne illness has actually increased more rapidly than the rate of consumption. Uh, if you look at the period from 1973 to 1997, we had 190 outbreaks associated with fresh uh, produce. But if you look at 98 to 2004, those six years, 384. So the rate of foodborne illness associated with fresh produce is increasing faster than the rate of consumption. That tells us that we have an issue that we have to deal with here. What is the cause of this? What's the reason for it? Mention some of the new products that are on the market these days. That's one of the reasons. Consumption has gone up and there are new products that didn't exist before. And there are some risks associated with that product, with those type products, fresh bagged salads, for example, that would not have been true of older products. If you think about it, take a head of lettuce, for example. You're bringing that head of lettuce out of the field. If it should happen to become contaminated at some point, if that is being sold as an intact head that someone takes home, chops up, makes into a salad, well, you have one family, most likely, that's at risk from that. If you bring that into a processing environment, chop it up, it gets mixed and mingled with a lot of other produce, that can be distributed to a large number of people. And we think that's part of the reason why we're seeing more of this happening these days, more of these foodborne illnesses. The other thing that's happening, uh, you have a much larger scale production than would have been true in the past and it's being distributed over a much larger area. So you've got these products going out to multiple states, large regions. So if there is a problem in one processing facility, it can potentially affect a large number of people. That's part of the issue too. Another part of the issue is we simply have better surveillance than we did in the past. We can track these foodborne illness outbreaks much more thoroughly than was true even 10 or 20 years ago. We have DNA fingerprinting, we have other technology that allows us to identify particular microorganisms that might be associated with an outbreak and trace that back. And so we're much more aware of these things than we used to be. Many things that may have happened in the past, we wouldn't necessarily have known about them. They might have flown under the radar. That's not true these days. We're much more aware. That's part of what's going on. So we do have, we think, a very real increase. We also have more awareness of what's happening. And it's possible 
that we actually have increased susceptibility to these uh, foodborne pathogens than was true in the past. And part of that is uh, the result of our own success. We have the safest food supply in the world. It's important to remember that. And our food is, by and large, very safe. One of the unintended consequences of that is that we're not as exposed to these pathogens as we would have been in years past. We don't necessarily have the resistance to them that we would have. On top of that, the population is aging a bit, on average, and uh, we know that that can increase the susceptibility too. People's immune system doesn't function as well. There are populations that are susceptible, more susceptible, because their immune system is not necessarily as, as robust. Uh, that would include very young individuals and the elderly, uh, people who are immunocompromised for one reason or another, perhaps they're receiving treatment for cancer, perhaps they have uh, HIV AIDS. There are a number of things that can cause it. So, again, we cannot eliminate risk in these types of products, fresh produce not being cooked. Very important for those people who may be susceptible uh, to, to, perhaps they need to consult with their physician and just find out what the recommendation is as to whether they should consume those products or not. Get questions a lot of times about organic versus conventional production. I mentioned that uh, manure handling, proper composting, and all of that, if you're going to use manure as a fertilizer, which would typically be done in organic production, uh, very important to do all of that properly and handle that. Uh, but we don't really have enough data to say that organic production is necessarily more hazardous or safer than conventional production. I get that question a lot. And I get people who are very passionate believers on both sides of that. Uh, my opinion is that we really don't have enough data to make a good, uh, a good judgment about that one way or the other. But I don't think we can say that one is necessarily riskier or safer than the other. It all depends on how it's managed. And the risks are going to be a little bit different for each type of production, uh, but those risks can be managed. So just some conclusions. We need a comprehensive system for food safety and fresh produce. There is no single point at which you can intervene and cure all the problems or eliminate all of the risks. It has to be all the way from the farm to the fork. And everyone has a responsibility there. This report could not be more timely. Certainly it will be an invaluable resource to my colleagues and to me on the Senate committee on agriculture, nutrition, and forestry as we write legislation to reform and modernize America's food safety system. The Council for Agricultural Science and Technology is a private, nonprofit organization, but it performs an outstanding public service. I appreciate the great job that CAST does in providing authoritative, unbiased, scientific information to legislatures and to the broader American public.